Welcome back. Black Magic Sorcerer here with a little explanation for this little altar I made for Yamaya. Now, if you guys are familiar with the Starbucks logo, that mermaid is believed by a lot of people to actually be a magical symbol, a magical effigy, I guess you could say, of Yamaya. So, who is Yamaya and why do I care about Yamaya? So, oddly enough, um, I was working with the spirit Belial, and this is right after I had a girlfriend pass away. I was kind of in a depression funk, but at the same time trying to battle and destroy my enemies um, at that moment. So it was a very intense time, but the name that kept being spelled out over and over on my little uh, Ouija board, which I use for my pendulum, this thing here cool actually I kept spelling out her name so I googled Yamaya and oddly enough it did come up as a name of a spirit and she's basically the mother of the ocean she is um, she is said to carry a machete which she uses to slay <coughs> her devotees enemies she is the ocean itself and she is kind of like a Mother Nature, um, African goddess is the way that I put her. She's basically the Leviathan of the, uh, not hoodoo, but uh, Santeria faith. So, in Santeria, it's basically a form of magic that is used very similar to voodoo. It's a, kind of a uh, re relative of voodoo, I guess you could say. And they have their own group of spirits called the Oreshas. And... Where I live, there's actually a lot of what we call botanicas. So in the Hispanic communities and the Brazilian immigrants and different people who have come to the United States, they have actually popularized this form of uh, Santeria. And it's really cool. You know, it it's something different. I got a lot out of working with her. So what happened is I suddenly got this feeling like I've been neglecting someone. And then I realized... I've been carrying this pouch with her picture and some seashells and some other stuff. Um, in fact, I didn't take those out right now. In my car with me for about the last 15 years. So it's kind of strange to forget, not forget, but to not give her the proper, I guess you could say, acknowledgement for... Sorry guys, I'm holding the camera with one hand. Acknowledgement for... I have not opened this bag in 15 years. What the hell's in here? Hold on. Sorry about that. So this is what was inside it. And I'm glad that I found these because I wanted to, like, do some seashells around her. So while I'm here, I will put her stuff where she likes it. Little decoration, that's all it is. It's a special stone I had dedicated to her. And this is her little uh, picture I carried with me. Probably just put it there for now. So anyway, why work with Yamaya? Well, she's good at a lot of things. She's a mother. So for someone who has not had what you would call a good relationship with a mother, or you feel neglected by your mother, or you just don't feel like you have a mother, or maybe you don't have a mother, period. You were never knew her because she died before you were able to know it. Um, these tragedies happen and Yamaya is essentially, she's not like the dweller at the crossroads that we're familiar with in Hoodoo, but she definitely comes with a certain, um, what would you call it? Army or a certain presence of spirits that are equal to her that are pretty, uh, powerful. And as you can see, I've got almost all of my Hoodoo Voodoo type, um, uh, books underneath her because it's something I just intended to get something different to prop her up on until then. But I thought, well, while I'm at it, I'll check out some of these books. Uh, speaking of which, if you guys have not heard of this book, The Conjure Workbook, Working the Roots by Star Cassis. If you have not read this book on uh, practical magic and hoodoo, I'd highly recommend it. It's got really cool spells in it. Um, 
these two books are very cool and I need to go back and reread them at some point, but holy crap, how can I do that when I haven't even finished my Order of Nine Angles books? So anyway, I wanted to talk about Yumaya and also kind of put aside the myth that a Afro spirit or someone who was a very great human being and was made into a god, so goddess, so to speak. It could be either, but I really feel like she um, brings with her a lot of peace, tranquility, the purity of the ocean. So that's why I've put seashells. I used to do salt. She has uh, special candles dedicated just to her. So I invoke her with a special conjuration. Conjuration. I can talk properly. And of course, this is something that I just printed out and put on cardboard a long time ago. Um, probably smeared it with blood, stuff like that. I don't think Yumaya likes blood sacrifice. I think she likes the food sacrifice. So like a, a bottle of rum, possibly a cigar, maybe some fruit like a bananas or um, watermelon or things that are of the element of water. So... If you're interested, I really suggest you look her up and uh, just see what she's about. Read about the history of the Doreshas. It's an excellent, really powerful uh, religion in itself. And if you do not practice Santeria, it probably seems benign because a lot of the material, just like with uh, Santa La Muerte, or La Muerta, it... It really comes with its own thing. You know what I'm saying? It, um, It's hard to appease someone who's been appeased for thousands of years. It's, it's just, there's no other way to say it. So, how do I do it? I try to honor more often. I try to, maybe, if I'm having a drink, pour her a drink. You can do stuff as simple as giving her a cup of black coffee. And these these things are all purely symbolic. It, they're not necessary. It's just a way to show to the spirit that you have some sort of affinity, connection to, and love for that spirit. That's why the whole key to evocation isn't about being big, bad, and evil. It's about having enough love in your heart and care for those spirits that they bind to you. So binding a spirit doesn't necessarily mean like in the traditional sense that we use angelic symbols and we trap them into triangles and we put them into jars and pots and all this shit. Um, in this very religion, they do make spirit pots, really powerful ones. Um, and they literally will sacrifice chickens, goats, all kinds of animal sacrifice. But in regards to Yumaya, that's not necessary. I don't think to just work with her in general and ask her for a little something, a little advice once in a while. But anyway... This is how I invoke Maya, so I'm sure I'm not pronouncing everything the right way, but I don't care because this is how I've been doing it. So if you don't like it, well, I think Maya would have some choice words for you. Holy Mother of the Sea, balance the temporal emotions that run through the magician. Make me more balanced, more subtle, and more flowing through life. Help me to explore the depths. Help me to achieve more and to understand more. Show a side of yourself that brings forth money, wealth, prosperity, and most of all, peace. So that is pretty much the freestyle thing that I will do for her. And as you all know, I do my videos pretty impromptu and I'm not going to do a big fucking production for a, a YouTube video like dress up in my robe and, you know, do a full blown out ritual. I've thought about it, but then the more I thought about it, my rituals are so specific to me, what would the point be of letting you see them? And, and I think it's kind of funny in a way that um, 
whatever I post about is almost nothing to do with the kind of magic that I practice and what I truly believe in. I'm an individual, so therefore I pretty much make my own rules, but at the same time my rules are based in logic and common sense. Like for example, if you want to get in contact or in touch with any spirit, you have to start from a place of care, concern, and you have to invoke that God inside of you that loves everything and all things. And you come at them with the attitude that you're at the top of the pecking order, but you love them. I'm here to hear you. I'm invoking you. I'm, I want to know you. Those are, that's the essence of magic. Getting to know spirits, building relationships with spirits, but not becoming a slave to having a bunch of freaking altars. I mean, if you think this is a serious altar, you need to look up what some of the Santeria practitioners do. Uh, this is almost a disgrace to Yamaya, truthfully, uh, compared to how they go out. But for me, my heart tells me that she's happy with what she's got, and when she needs something, I listen up, and when I need something, she listens. So... That's all that a relationship is. She's just a friend. She's, um, in fact, I did invoke her one time into a dream and had a sort of sexual experience with her because um, she appeared in a strange form of a kind of an older woman and one thing led to another and boom. Next thing you know, I'm having astral sex with Yamaya. No, no disrespect, Yamaya. One of the other things that a lot of practitioners do in hoodoo and voodoo and... Santeria and all these related kind of religions is they uh, they go into possession and into trance. So, you know, I don't know what it would be like to be possessed by spirit of death. You know, um, would it be a pleasant experience to have Yamaya take over my body? I don't know. Um, I do know this. The practitioners of these faiths go into full-blown motherfucking possession. And you can see that there's something else there. That's, to me, that's real magic. Um, there's no there's no guessing or, or second-guessing the fact that these spirits are fucking real. So anyway, friends, more to come later as usual. I'm still recovering. I've been really sick with my stomach lately. Recovering from my surgery, but it's, it's all good in the end. So, anyway, thank you guys for watching. Thank for your subscriptions, and for God's sake, dark blessings.